Hi there and welcome along to another workout for you to row along to. If you've been doing the Zero to Hero series, then you'll be happy to hear that this is the last time we're going to do the 4-3-2-1 workout. If you haven't been doing the series, where have you been? <laughs> so this workout, what we're going to do is 4 minutes at 20 strokes a minute at a low intensity, and then we're going to do 3 minutes at 24 strokes a minute, a little bit harder. Then we're going to do 2 minutes at 28 strokes a minute, harder still, and then 1 minute at 30 strokes a minute, at well pretty much getting close to max not actual max but pretty much max intensity we're then going to take two minutes rest and then we're going to do all of that three more times so by the end of this workout you should be pretty much worn out okay so this is a tough workout expect to work hard expect to sweat uh, and just make sure that you're in a good place physically in order to do this workout all right so we're going to get into a four minute warm up before we get into our main session today because we're going to start off easy anyway we don't have to worry about really hitting the ground running and before before we can get into our four minute warm up, we have to set up our machines. On an Averon then, that means going straight to your resistance and setting that to where you want it to be. If you're using a Concept2 in that Averon app, then I want you to set your drag factor to wherever that would normally be. In both instances, the guide is to get a nice weight from the stroke, you feel connected, but you don't have to heave in order to get the machine moving. Next up, let's move to the foot straps and set your foot stretcher height so that you're able to get into the front of the machine with your shins in a vertical position comfortably. If you're set too high, it can get a bit difficult to get there. Set too low, it can be easy to go past that point. Backside escapes from underneath you. You lose power, it can get a bit uncomfortable. A good ballpark here is that the strap covers the balls of your feet or the bottom lace of your shoes. So if you've never looked at it before, that's where to set it for now. And then you can adjust just for comfort with those kind of ballpark guidelines I gave you about getting shins to vertical. Okay, so we're going to get into this form minute warm up and we're going to do it at 20 strokes a minute and we're going to start off at a nice low intensity just connecting our feet to our hands which I will explain when we get started. So let's get going in five, four, three, two, one and here we go. So intensity to start here is really as though you were just standing up out of a squat. Maybe you're holding onto a bag of shopping or something. Enough of a force that you can feel you're connecting throughout your body, but not so much that you're starting to kind of strain your body right from the outset. After all, who knows what you've been doing up until this point in your day. Maybe you've just woken up. Maybe you've spent the morning sitting at your desk like I have. Maybe it's, maybe you're a nighttime exerciser, who knows? But ease yourself in. That's the point of these warm ups, is to open up your body Get yourself moving, ready for what's about to come. And so the idea is to push your feet at the same time your hands connect the handle to the machine. And now we're a minute in, you can push a little harder with your feet. And I want you to make sure and hold that forwards tilt over your hips and arms straight as you push your feet, finding the timing so that you push at the same time your hands take up the weight of the machine. The intensity you're looking for here is that you start to get kind of out of breath, heart rate is starting to rise, but it doesn't feel like you're working hard. It just now feels like you're working out as though you were climbing 10 flights of stairs or something. But in three strokes time, we're going to take one foot out, put it on the ground, and then work on opening up our hips and stuff a bit more. So foot on the ground, continue rowing. And with only one leg strapped in here, you should find it easier to roll forwards into that shins vertical position and without your hips all bound up you should be able to get into that forwards tilt a bit easier at the front too. Let's swap feet. Uh, oh, one deft move there. <laughs> Strapping in and out. But yeah, so you should still be able to push with that leg that's 
still strapped in, so don't take it easy. Still push, still activate the muscle. Feel that connection through your body as you push with the leg. Last one here. Put your foot back in, legs nice and straight, and roll with your back and arms. So, as you come forwards, nice straight arms, and then swing with your back first to take up the initial strain of the stroke, the tension of the stroke, and then pull in with your arms, and then reverse it out with the arms, rock forwards again. One more here. And let's roll into the front with straight arms, forwards tilt, and then just push out. Now I didn't strap in my left foot here, so this is a bit precarious. <laughs> Try to hold straight arms and the forwards tilt as you push. Don't worry about too much power here. You're really just working on timing and positioning. The power is not the important part. It's more about holding that forwards tilt. Last one. There we go. So, that's the warm-up done. Keep on moving up and down the rail. Have a quick drink and I'll explain one more time what it is we're doing today. Okay then, so as a quick reminder, what we're doing today is four, three, two, one. That means four minutes at 20 strokes a minute at that light intensity that you're doing in the second minute of the warm-up. Then three minutes at 24 strokes a minute, a little bit faster and harder. Then two minutes at 28 strokes a minute, faster and harder still. And then one minute at 30 strokes a minute, faster and harder still. Take two minutes rest and then we're going to do it all again three more times. So four times four, three, two, one. So 40 minutes worth of working out and it is going to take you up there intensity wise. Uh, those two minute rests, I am going to continue doing some light rowing, but of course, make sure that you are comfortable, have a drink and stuff while you're going through. But I'll talk to you all about this during the main row. Okay, so if you are ready, let's get started at that four minutes and 20 strokes a minute, low intensity in five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. So, just take it easy here. Remember, this is a progressive workout where over the course of each 10 minutes, it's going to get harder and harder. So find your low intensity, five out of 10 effort pace that you're used to rowing at and stick to it especially on a row like today, where you are going to get the chance to row harder and faster. There's no excuse to push this too hard because in just over three minutes, you're gonna go a little harder anyway, and then harder and harder. And really what I'd hate to think would happen is that these four minutes, you go out too fast, and then the progressions, as we're supposed to be going faster, you can't manage because you started out too hot. And again, once we get through this workout, you're gonna look at these four minute intros it's like almost an extended cool down, or sorry, extended rest, let's say. It's like you're, you have the two minute rest, you then use these four minutes as a way to just prep into the rest of the workout. So this first one, obviously it's easy to go, this is rather slow, I'm going to go fast, but trust me, you're just cheating, no, not cheating, but you're just harming your own development if you do that, if you think that way. So nice and low and slow. I'm at 158 pace, which on the Averon is my five out of 10 effort. I know from, well, certainly from the experience of making this Zero to Hero series, that 158 pace is my sweet spot for low intensity, zone two kind of rowing. And what I'm gonna hope 
is that over the course of this workout, when I go up to 24 strokes a minute, I'd hope I'd jump about six seconds pace maybe. And then up to 28, probably another six or seven. And then up to 30, maybe five seconds more if I'm having a strong day. But I want there to be large leaps as I change up through the stroke rates in response to putting in more power and more strokes. So we'll find that in just under 30 seconds time when we do our first boost. So we're gonna go from 20 to 24. And you're gonna do that by pushing a little bit harder with the legs. And that will give you a faster drive speed. Just take one more. So here we go then. Push just a tiny bit harder with the legs. You'll have a slightly faster drive speed. And then if you couple that up with a slightly faster recovery towards the front of the machine, that's all it's gonna to take to go from 20 to 24. After all, you're just going from one stroke every three seconds to one stroke every two and a half seconds. So it's not a massive increase. And as hoped, I've gone from 158 to 152 pace. And apart from thinking about pushing a little harder to get the stroke rate up, I'm not over pushing, if that makes sense. I'm kind of, if there was a curve of power and stroke rate, I'm within the kind of direct relation. I could push harder if I wanted to, but then that would tip the balance. So right now I just want this to feel kind of six, seven out of 10 effort. My breathing rate has definitely gone up. My heart rate has definitely gone up, but it doesn't feel anywhere or yeah, it doesn't feel anywhere near max intensity. One more minute here. Carry on pushing with the legs. Hopefully you found your rhythm. Remember you can watch me for stroke rate. Just drive when I drive and recover how I recover. And that should lock you into the right rates. And then hopefully just through mimicking me, you'll develop your own rhythm. Okay, 15 seconds to go until the next change up to 28. So again, we're just gonna push harder with our legs. Last one here, you ready? Here we go. So a harder push means a faster drive speed. And then you want to recover a little quicker too. Remember once the rates go up, if you are struggling to get to the high rates, remember it's the handle that kind of guides you through the stroke rate. 
the handle should always be moving so you don't stop at the front and you don't hold in to your chest at the back come into the front and instantly turn it around no hanging around at the front of the stroke and then as you pull the handle in and it taps against your chest at sternum height you instantly release it again don't pause at the back there's no value when rowing normally to pausing at the back on a rowing machine okay almost there two more one more and now we're going to go up to 30 so now push harder so that you're taking one stroke every two seconds so it's closer now to one second drive one second recover and just keep that stroke consistent and your pace as consistent as you can I am 143 which is what 15 seconds faster than my low intensity pace all right two more strokes one more and that is our first 10 minutes done Whew. now hopefully uh, if you think back to the first time we did this in the Zero to Hero series when we only did it twice hopefully you can already recognise the difference how much you've progressed how your fitness and power has improved loads since we last did it and remember we've already done it three times and you survived through that so there's no reason at all that four of these is out of your abilities again as long as you're being sensible here and the four minute opening chunk you're rowing at a sensible pace right now I'm going to do single armed rowing for a second while I take a drink just to keep the timer moving and my body moving oh. it's what to do if ever you're rowing like a half marathon or even an hour or even half an hour and you want to have a drink that's often the best thing to do is just single arm rowing just to keep the machine moving you'll lose a few seconds but nowhere near as much as if you just put the handle down all right we have 10 seconds to go until the start of the next chunk so i'm going to take a cheeky stroke just to get into time one more you ready here we go then back to 20 strokes a minute and a low intensity pace so last time round I was rowing this at 158 pace at 20 strokes a minute so I want to make sure to get back to that pace as quickly and smoothly as possible and that's what I'm hoping for you too so if you keep an eye on the paces that you row at through this workout and then just try and match them so I didn't quite clock what I was rowing at 
for the 28 strokes a minute stage last time. But I know the 30s, I was down at 143 and or say 152 for the 24s. So as long as I'm still in that kind of ballpark, then I'm happy. Because you should, as much as you're likely to get a bit more fatigued as this workout continues, because of the two minute rest and this four minutes easy, you should have the energy in you to get through all four intervals at similar paces. And in fact, if you want to sprint the last one minute of the workout, if you've got it in you, then by all means do. But as well as all of the fitness and power benefits that this workout gives you, the control over your rowing, learning how it's about pushing with the legs in order to increase your pace and stroke rate rather than it being about pulling with the arms. It's almost like that lesson is more important than the fitness and power. Because really, consistency is king when it comes to rowing. If you can develop a consistent stroke and you know how to change the power by pushing with your legs, then you'll find you'll enjoy your workouts a lot more because they'll be less random. You'll be able to row for longer and you will then see the benefits. Well, I'm hoping you see, can see the benefits already. Maybe you've noticed fitness and strength benefits. Maybe if you are also doing some kind of calorie controlled diet, maybe all of the sessions are helping you hit a deficit if you're looking to lose weight. Who knows? But I really hope you're seeing results. Okay, in four strokes time, we're gonna kick it up a notch to 24 strokes a minute. Two more. Last one here. Here we go then. Push harder with the legs. And you should notice the difference in how your body's moving here, as well as the sound from your machine. It should be a little louder. You should hear the flywheel or whatever you have is spinning faster in response to the added power you're putting in to be able to take the stroke rate up. But again, it's all about consistency. Consistency of technique, making sure that as you come forwards, your arms are straight, got forwards tilt, and you hold straight arms and forwards tilt for as long as possible as you push your feet into the machine. And that way, the power of your legs and your back braced against that power and the handle gives you that consistency of oomph into the machine. 
And so then what you're looking for is no matter what stroke rate you row at to follow the same pattern so that you know that it's just about leg push. Okay, last minute of the 24s and then it'll start to get a little bit spicier with the 28s and then the 30. It's a good workout for that actually because you, or at least I, really enjoy the four and the three because they're easier or they're the easier longer parts of the workout and then you can really bite into the next two okay two more strokes one more and let's push a little harder with your legs take the rate up it's quite easy to kind of hang out at the front of the stroke on the higher rates because there's momentum that coils your body up like a spring at the front of the stroke and so you can kind of soak into that momentum and hang around at the front of the stroke for a bit too long again if you were on the water rowing that may have its value in terms of giving you time to set up the blade and take the catch but on a rowing machine if you are pausing front or back you're just wasting time and letting the flywheel spin down rather than keeping it topped up and easier to turn as a result all right almost there two more strokes then we're up to 30 so push harder really think about keeping those arms straight and letting the power flow through your body into your arms and fingers hooked over the handle and then only pulling at the back of the stroke where your arms top up the power rather than fight it if you pull too early almost there two more last one oh. so that's chunk number two done again keep moving if you wish have a drink historically I have been more of a fan of stopping entirely because the way I see it you want every ounce of energy that you have available to go into the workout portion of your row but 
it must be said, I'm not really expending much energy here. I'm down at 3.15 pace, which I know some people can only just manage that, but uh, this is just relative to me, okay? So my low intensity pace is 158. So 315 for me is very slow. But if, it's, if 315 for you is fast, don't worry, it doesn't matter. It's not you versus me, it's you versus you. As long as you are putting in the work and you are feeling you're getting fitter and faster with the work that you're putting in, that's all that matters. If you want to be faster, put in the work. Anything is achievable, as long as you put in the effort. Okay, in three strokes time, we're back to 20 strokes a minute and that low intensity. One more for me. All right, here we go then. And nice low intensity. And even if you were light rowing through that uh, rest, this should still feel like it's a rest, nice and comfortable. You're just moving with purpose now, whereas before I was just kind of rocking up and down. Make sure still to connect. Nice straight arms, push with the feet. And try and make it happen at the same time that you push when your hands make the handle bite. And it really is worthwhile when we come back to these four minute chunks, spending the time working on these technique principles. Because as you go through the three, two and one, and the intensity builds, it can be easy to lose focus as autopilot takes over when it comes to your technique. And often, what can happen is that if you only half learn technique, that it doesn't really bed in. So you get people that will watch a couple of videos, read up about technique, sit down on a machine and go, all right, sure, yep, arm straight, forest tilt, push. But because they don't spend time just practicing and grinding that in. They're so eager to go straight into like a, say a 2K time trial or something. They don't actually build the good foundation of a good stroke. And so when they do roll fast, that all falls apart. They pull early from the front, posture collapses. early backswings, all the errors. And so that's why not only is a workout like this good to give you the time to focus, but it's also why I talk about technique a lot. It's not just so that I've got something to talk to you about over the course of a 40 minute row. It's also because it's really important that you're able to spend time concentrating on that good form to help grind it in. And so posture is the important one here, especially as you might start to get tired, is to make sure that as you finish the stroke, you sit up as you rock forwards over your hips that it's not about crumpling lower or upper back. You wanna make sure your hips rock forwards before you bend your knees. And that way you should be in the right posture 
as you slide to the front, ready for the next stroke. Okay, two more strokes, one more. And now let's push harder with the legs. Take that stroke rate up to 24 strokes a minute. If it does feel awkward at first, remember you can follow me. But it shouldn't feel massively different. You'll notice the difference, but it's not like as if I asked you to go from 20 to 30, which you'll have to admit when we have done that, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Mixing it up is just, it's good for your body, of course, but it's also just good for your uh, mental state. I mean, so we look at the last session in this series that was 40 minutes at 20 strokes a minute. You do need to find a almost meditative groove to get through a roll like that, or you need to be distracted by someone talking you through and just keeping your brain ticking over. But if you took the same row and jumped between, say, 20, 24, and 30 every minute, you will find that that 40 minutes goes quicker because it's a more interesting row to do. Not that I want to run the risk of saying that a 40 minute low intensity row isn't good. Frankly, out of all the sessions in this series so far, that 40 minute row was probably the most valuable because it gave you time to focus on grinding in a good technique, but also built up your core fitness, mitochondria, all that stuff. All right, four strokes. Two more, one more. And now we're up to 28. So push a little harder. I'm definitely feeling a little fatigued here for this push to 28, rather than it being just a natural automatic push. I'm focusing on getting the right power into the legs and not trying to fall into the trap of thinking it's going to help to pull with my arms. Because like I said last time, the problem is that when you pull from the front with your arms, it kind of fights, diffuses the power from your legs. So rather than thinking it'll help to pull, it's actually causing more speed drop or speed loss. You might be able to get the stroke rate up, but it's artificial. You want to still be holding the same paces that you did 
in the first and second interval. All right, 10 seconds. Then we go up to 30 for one minute. Two more strokes. One more. You ready? Push. Keep the arms straight. Let the power accelerate into the machine from your legs. Don't worry. There's only 40 seconds, 20 strokes to go. So if you want, you can count down from 15. Just listen to my wish, match it with your stroke and keep counting. Almost there. Five, four, three, two, one. There we go. So, again, reflect back to the last time we did this and in fact hang on I'm going to have a drink first I'll shut up for five seconds eh oh. and last time we rode this session we were all done at this stage and think about the fatigue how tired you were last time I know when we got to the end of the third interval last time I was really pleased we were done I was like I certainly wouldn't have another one of them in me whereas now I know that as much as fatigue is setting in now I definitely have another round of 4-3-2-1 in me partly because we're starting with that low intensity 4 and then the mid 24 for 3 minutes uh, I know that I can easily make those 7 minutes and then the last 3 are nothing but do you just think like I say reflect to how this felt last time and kind of go hey man you know what he's right I know it's been tough, but I also know I've got another one in me. Right, so widen my grip again to get ready for the next one, which is starting in three, two, one. You ready? So here we go, back to 20 strokes a minute, five out of 10 effort. Which, don't be surprised, if in order to hold the same pace that you have the, f the first three times in this session don't be surprised if like rowing 158 pace for me right now doesn't feel like 5 out of 10 effort anymore this does feel like 6 out of 10 because of the workload that's gone before this but again reflecting on the last time we did this this is how I felt last time going into the third chunk whereas in this workout I had a whole extra chunk that's going into the fourth one that I feel like this so fitness has definitely improved because listen I'm making these videos for you I'm sitting here telling you what to do but at the same time these are also my rowing training workouts so I need to make sure to get the benefits from them I'm not phoning this in I'm not sitting here too posh to push telling you what to do but 
not putting in the effort. I mean, it'd be pretty hard to act out of breath for, for all this time, or even to try and force my body to work up a sweat. So I'm working just as hard as you are. Like, okay, I could probably be going an extra one or two seconds faster here if I wasn't talking to you. But like I said before, I quite like the added benefit that talking away to you gives with my breath control, my cardio, the fact that my I'm breathing kind of half as much as I normally would means my body has to adapt and get better at how it utilizes oxygen so that I'm when I am racing or rowing and I'm not talking to you hopefully I've given my body a little extra bit of training anyway so we're coming up on 30 seconds to go in this last four minute chunk and then we'll kick it up to 24 just by pushing harder with the legs Hopefully you feel fully recovered now, ready for the next three chunks of this workout. Last stroke here, you ready? So let's push harder. It may take you three or four strokes just to get back into the swing of the rate and power. I know the first two just then felt a little bit weaker because I don't quite have the same zing to my legs. But this is why we train. This is why this kind of workout is a progression workout where over the weeks we've done it more and more is to help our bodies become better at working at these intensities. Like at the beginning or two sessions ago, let's say the six times five, I could almost guarantee that if I was to do that again, like not the next one, but the one after, guarantee that I could make that eight times five and you'd be perfectly fine with it because of how you've developed from doing it once but then also this workout because they all feed into each other there's a purpose to every row and there's also a purpose to the order they come in. Like it's not a cookie cutter plan. It's about pushing and pulling, knowing when to stretch you and knowing when you've already been stretched so that's why in this series of four rows that started with the six by five and then took you longer than we've rode before in this series why this isn't a sprint workout 
it's a build up because I've already worked too hard oh, hang on two more strokes then we're going to go up to 28 here we go push harder with the legs so yeah over the course of these workouts I've already asked a lot of your strength and fitness and so to throw in a max intensity session here not only may you run the risk of not being able to complete it but possibly you'd have to back off to complete it and therefore don't get the benefit of how it's intended so that's why I wouldn't put a Tabata Tabata here and why it's better to do the progression where you start easy and then at this point you are dipping your toe into it becoming max and then if you're anything like me chances are the last one minute coming up is going to feel pretty much max to hold your pace all right three two one here we go was one stroke early there's nothing wrong with that up to 30 hold the pace that you've been hitting or if you are feeling like it then once we hit 30 to go sprint so sprint if you want to Ooh. <laughs> scream if you want to go faster don't do that if you're in a gym well or at home you might find your family will come running in okay four three two one oh nice and light rowing just to keep your body moving don't worry about technique just move up and down in a few strokes time we'll start rolling with a better technique okay so just ease the power right down but get into the right positions so possibly slower than the first minute of the warm up so less than that opening power so it would be like a slow-mo standing up from a squat at this stage because you're not pushing I'm down at 18 strokes a minute and I'm really just connecting enough to feel the, the kind of natural tension of the stroke but hardly any power going in I just want to move my body oh. and then after today's workout I'm going to go and do some stretching if you're interested in a full cool down and stretching I've got a video up here standalone one uh, that is just for a cool down and then stretching 
so you can do that afterwards maybe you're going to go do some weights next i still recommend coming back and maybe skip the cool down part of that video but certainly do the stretching it's important to do your quads your hamstrings possibly shoulders glutes after a workout like this where we were really top end by the end i mean i was well, depending on whether my my zone was playing up on, on me or not i was up at maximum heart rate by the end of that final one minute so i am happy that i put in everything i could okay i'm just going to take two more strokes and then i am done with this light rowing you don't have to stop of course you can keep on cooling down but i'm going to make sure and say goodbye quickly because I know we all have better things to do than listen to me. So um, there you go. So that was the final version of the 4-3-2-1 in the Zero to Hero series. I'm not going to say I'm not going to make this again because I really do enjoy that row. So it may pop up again in another form. But for the Zero to Hero series, that's the last time we'll see 4 3 2, one If ever you're looking for a row to do yourself and you're like, I quite enjoyed that, feel free to do a, a number five. Do it again. Um, because it's really, really good for you. And that kind of progression up through the stroke rates and paces is so viable for so many reasons, okay? So, uh, so yeah, so thank you for joining me for this one. Uh, the next row in the Zero to Hero series is gonna be back to a low intensity fitness building row. So that will hopefully help you recover after this one. Um, and yeah, as we draw to a close, we've got, after the next one, we've got four more to go. And I'll be the last run of it. And then hopefully I can then pat you on your way, send you running to something better. So yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this one. Um, Oh, I've not actually thought of... Can you do hashtags with numbers? I don't know if you can. Have I ever seen a hashtag with numbers before? I mean, try 4321, um, see if, as a, as a hashtag, see if that works. Might not. I don't know, actually. I've got no idea. I, anyway, I'll go deal with that myself rather than wasting your time. So thank you very much for joining me in, in this one. I will hopefully see you in another video, whether it's any of these Zero to Hero series or any of the other videos I have up here. I look forward to rowing, rowing along with you. I can't even get my own name, name right. <laughs> rowing along with you in, in one of them. So until then, please take care of yourselves. Row well, be well. Bye-bye.